Welcome to Performance TV presented by Top Coat. We've got a great show for you this week and we're going to start off with this rock crawler. I'm working on the rod ends because, well, they're worn out and it is a pretty substantial job. You can see these things are, well, they've been through a lot of uses and I'm sure whoever owns this bad boy has had a whole lot of fun, but you can see they are worn out. And it's a good idea to swap these out every now and again, especially if you're getting a lot of fun out of your vehicle. Now we've already used some anti-seize and we're going to put this one in place. Now there are rod ends all over this vehicle. Think about it. When you're rolling on the rocks, you need that wheel articulation and a new rod end is going to help you out. To tell you more about it, Kathy is in our performance TV studio. Well, in addition to what we see Joe installing, Bob from Rod End Supply, we have a whole lot more that could go on our buggy. We certainly do. We've already got everything set up for to finish out the buggy with and basically what we're trying to do he wants more articulation in his suspension the rod ends are going to give him that with the high misalignment spacers okay. okay where the crawler joints don't have quite as much articulation you guys just cover such a vast amount of parts and pieces that we can use and you've got a lot of off-road stuff we do a lot of uh, weld in bungs guys make their own parts we have some offset joints that we make special We've got uh, clevises that are used in limit straps. We have our own version of the um, crawler joint as well. And then we have a big bush joint, normally used a lot of times in Jeeps and this type of thing. And you guys even, even have a line of products to help out with shocks. We do a lot with the shock companies. We've probably got at least a dozen different shock companies that we make various and sundry parts for. First, the bearings that go in the ends of the shocks. That's one item. We also make complete ends for the shocks, and we make a lot of the internal components that go with them as well. You've worked with pretty much just about anybody you can possibly imagine, right down to the folks with the mouse ears. Disney people, they use the smallest one on the table. We do a lot with the RC people, and anybody that's using any type of a remote control type uh, systems that need a small joint, but they need something that's going to work. I find this pretty interesting as well. Yeah, we make cups of various and sundry sizes for the uniballs. These go into the cup. A lot of times what people are doing, they're making their own suspensions like A-arms. They'll weld tubes onto this, and the tubes will attach to the chassis itself. The uniball goes in. We also sell them a clip that goes on there and keeps it in there. So that becomes a joint at the end of the A-arm. You know, what I always find interesting when we talk to you, Bob, is what you are really known for. Well, we do a lot of the injection molded race rod ends. Basically, if we start out with a body, the body is machined and we cut a slot inside the body. The ball is then loaded into the slot, which we have a loading slot in there. Once it's in there, then we injection mold the red nylon fiber, which is patented for us. And what it does, it goes all the way around the ball, it lubricates it, there's nowhere for it to come out because it's in a slot. And we're not going to have to worry about, you know, dust and dirt and things like that, getting in there and wearing that out. And I'm really interested to see how Joe's coming along. Bob had a lot of interesting stuff over there. I think most of those probably fit on this buggy right here. And it's going to make the ride out there on the trails a whole lot better. In the end, you think about how travel over the rocks is going to be so much better for the suspension. And this is the kind of thing that most people, they don't even think about that they have to swap them out, but they do. And it's gonna make you safer, it's gonna make your ride better, and you're gonna have a good time. So whether you're crawling on the rocks or you got a four-link suspension on your drag race car, you need to check your rod ends. And I think it is very important to inspect your entire vehicle. The bottom line is, check yours and make sure you're safe. We'll be back with more Performance TV presented by Top Coat after this. Performance TV presented by Topcoat is brought to you by RockAuto.com. All the parts your car will ever need. Open Tracker Racing Products, home of the roller front suspension. 330 Fab, custom built Jeep grills. And by Topcoat, the best coatings in the world. Welcome back to Performance TV presented by Topcoat. You know, back in 2008, automakers and manufacturers, they went to a drive-by wire system. And what that did in hopes for them was to save parts, to get a better connection right to the throttle body. But what they really did was took away some of the fun. They took away throttle response. They deliberately put in a throttle lag. Well, what we're gonna do today is see if we can take care of that thanks to Red Light Bandit. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get a baseline run and some information that we're recording right now from stock.
All right, so now that we're going to get back into the studio, we're going to install the Red Light Bandit, which is super easy, and then we're going to come back out and see how much this thing really picks up. Not only is the Red Light Bandit available for the Camaro, but it's also available for other late model vehicles, the SUVs, trucks, and so much more because they have three different modules that they have designed. Actually, this was designed by a former GM employee who worked on a lot of this stuff and said, hey, if GM would have changed this over, they would have done something just like this. So what we're going to install here on the Camaro today is not going to be throwing false codes, according to the folks at Red Light Bandit, because it's not like the Chinese knockoffs and if you would happen to put a scanner on this it's not going to affect that either so if you would need to take it to the dealership or whatever because it's pretty much non detectable this thing is really going to make a big difference according to the folks about a 60% throttle response difference they also say that once you install it you might want to make sure that you've got a clear path in front of you because you're really going to notice the difference Joe let's get this thing installed we're getting ready for our install and it seems pretty easy to me. First of all, we've got the module and the wiring harness and this just kind of takes its place between the two that are currently there and it is keyed which makes it very nice that you are not going to get it wrong. So now it is connected and we're going to go down below and take loose what we have already on our Camaro. Pull the factory harness loose and connect it to the red light bandit. Just like that, it is in. And then take our harness that comes with the red light bandit and put it into place. And it snaps in and you know it is in. It feels good. Before we come up, try to put it in a nice location so it is out of the way of the travel of the pedal. Look at that, that turned out pretty well and we are ready to go. And so now Kathy Fisher is gonna take this Camaro back out on the road and see the difference. The Red Light Bandit is installed. We're back in the same location with the same pavement just a little bit later in the day because of the installation time. It's time to find out if there is a big difference. Let me tell you something. There's definitely a big difference. What a major change in the throttle response. Really woke this thing right up. Now we need to get back in, get our data that we've recorded from this little pass, do some comparison, and see what we've got. All right, Joe, come here. I want you to take a look at this. Now, look at the difference between the two runs. And let me tell you something. It was immediate throttle response. I didn't feel any lag. You know, these things are all designed, individually tested and assembled here in the United States. Of course, we got all of our information from our microface technology. We had a little three axis accelerometer in there. You can find out more by going to their website, redlightbanditllc.com. We'll have more right after this. Time now for Top Coats tips and techniques. One of the really great benefits of Top Coat F11 is its easy release coating characteristics, um, you know, and its non stick coating characteristics. It, it's a really great coating with a really great barrier, and again, the more you use, the better it gets. But as a great example, you know how dirty rims can get, and I just want to show you just how easy that comes off with using the Top Coat F11. And I also want to do some of the road film too, so you can get an idea of just, again, how easy that comes off with the barrier of Top Coat there. I can also do this tire too. So I'll split the rim in half like this and watch this. This beautiful rim is just going to come right to life. Knowing that the coating is there, that's why everything can wipe off so fast, so quickly and efficiently. And then the same thing with the tire. All you got to do is spray it on, just wipe it real fast and you're done. And uh, Mike, what do you got going on up there? I noticed you're working on that, that denim stripe up there. Yeah, I tell you, it does the same thing with denim. Like if you look at this flat matte type paint, you can even do it along with the glossy surfaces, you know, which is incredible because I know of no other products you can really do that with. And it doesn't do the buildup around the stripe, the, the little edges. Yeah, you don't get all that white buildup like you do with all these other products on the market, that wax residue. And that's why it's safe on so many different surfaces, whether it's the tire, whether it's the rims, and even this plastic, watch this, all the way down. Look how nice that turned out. 
So if you want to learn more, you can always go to topcoat.tv. Performance TV, presented by Topcoat, coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. Time now for the lowdown with Magic Creeper. Here in the Performance TV garage, we use the Magic Creeper all the time. It is a great tool, but it is also very durable. Absolutely, in all the different environments and the things you're going to be using this in, the patented multi-layer construction is high strength and it's puncture resistant. We're going to put it to the test. Look at this. Now, obviously, you're not going to sit here and try to do something like that, but if you're rolling across the floor, you run into a tool, you run into some rocks or whatever because you happen to be outside, you don't have to worry about it getting ripped. Now, what about it being water and oil resistant? Look at this. Grease. Grease. You're going to be able to wipe it right off. It's not going to affect it. Just clean it right up. And there you go. And that's the thing, is you can spray just about anything on it, and it's going to continue to work, and it's going to live a great life. What about some antifreeze? Don't do it. Yep. We'll no, it just handle it yes. like nothing. And that shows you that it is resistant. You're sitting on this. You're rolling around on the Magic Creeper. It's protecting you while you're doing your job under your vehicle. It is durable. It is useful. You can get under vehicles. You get that a little bit extra space under there, which for me means a lot. You can slide around. You can keep it in your vehicle. It stores easy. It weighs next to nothing. That's right. It weighs three pounds rolls right up and it's always ready when you are ready. Make sure that you are getting the original, the real Magic Creeper by going to their website at magiccreeper.com. Customization is all about personalization. Some people like them low, some people like them high, and some people like them bright and lit up. Dave is in the house from Lightning Pipe Tips, going to show us these great exhaust tips that we can send lighted messages. How cool is that? It's very cool, Joe. And where did you come up with this idea? A couple of years ago, I was working with a couple of aftermarket products and combined those with LED readouts. So how does it work? Obviously, it's an exhaust tip, and our exhaust is going to run out to it or through it, but the lighted message part, wh where does that come from? So walk me through. That actually comes from a downloadable app, and you just simply speak to the app what you want the tailpipe to receive and say, and it's done. So cool. That simple. So what about the exhaust part, because we are a motor type people. Right. We believe in performance. So the exhaust runs to it. How does that work? The exhaust runs through it actually and is displaced through the bottom of the tailpipe tip. Leaving the tailpipe for our lighted message. Leaving a heated area and a non-heated area so that the electronics don't overheat. Okay, so lighting cars. I'm from South Florida and I got to tell you, I think we were the first in the country to do it. I can't prove that, but it certainly feels true. This is a thing right now. Everybody wants lights. Everyone wants messages. You are filling a need. Yes, we are. We were first to market with this type of technology uh, with an LED lit tailpipe tip. Well, okay, so downloadable mobile app. You're sitting in the yes. seat, you want to pick a message, and so how does that work? Do you have a pre-selected group of messages or can you program it? You have uh, between four and six verbal lines, full sentences that you can say whatever you want it to say at the tailpipe tip. Oh, that is and so... any neat. color as well. Okay, so the colors are customizable yes, are. as well. So I've got a red car, I can have a red message. All the sentences can be red, they can be multiple colors, you pick. Well, that sounds fun. Like, if I'm going on a road trip with my friends and I want to send them a message, yes. I could just send it through my exhaust tip. Absolutely. No cell phone calls, no two-way radios, just a message through your tailpipe tip. And what about customizing what I want to say? You've got the prefab sentences, so to speak, but certain words. What if I want to tell someone something totally different? What if I want to give a pretty girl my phone number? Then you can do that. If you can get her attention to the tailpipe tip, then you can send her a message. I think it could totally work for that. I think it could. Now, what about installing? It seems like it would go on simple enough with a clamp. Very simple. Uh, just there's a few modifications to the tailpipe piece itself. And then there's a cable as you would normally wire a stereo system. So we have to get electricity back to it. And that's what power suggests. Now, this is obviously for a car, I would imagine tuner cars, but you have them for other styles of vehicle. So let's run down the styles of vehicle we might see this and this might be available for. Okay, so we can start with cars, trucks, semis, RVs, boats, and motorcycles. So 
All vehicles. For All the most vehicles part. for the most part in different sizes and shapes in the near future. Now I can think of just hundreds of examples of well lit cars that this would be the perfect add on. But I know people want to send custom messages. Is there an upgrade for that where they can say whatever they want? Yes. After the purchase, you can call an 800 number and simply give them your information and say whatever you want to say on the tailpipe tip. Oh, that is just amazing. Now, what about traffic laws? I'm sure some people are wondering, like, hey, is that legal? Absolutely legal in all 50 states, DOT approved. Wow. And so Lightning Pipe Tips has come up with something that I think is next generation. If you're a tuner, if you have a lit car, if you want to get attention, this is going to help you get attention. Now, I just want to know, like, where were you when you came up with this? Um, actually, I dream a lot of these inventions, to be honest with you. So I wake up in the middle of the night, write them down, and there's the prototypes. I think it is super cool, and I know the viewers will too. If you guys like it, you got to hit the website. You can start sending messages back and forth and light your car. I love it. Hit the website. We'll be back with more Performance TV presented by Top Coat after this. Performance TV presented by Top Coat is brought to you by Stage 8 Fasteners, home of the world's best locking hitter bolt. Locking kits now available for all turbo applications. Go to stage8.com. Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. American Soundbar, American made, veteran owned. And by Magic Creeper, the most versatile creeper ever. Your car's electrical system is very important. That's why every once in a while, you should check it. Yeah, and especially on the vehicle that we have here today, we've kind of noticed that the lights have been a little bit dim. So we're curious, is it the battery or is it the charging system itself? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use our voltmeter. A lot of you guys have these at home. If you don't, you can pick up a battery tester at your local auto parts store, but we're just gonna see where we are and yeah, we'd like to see it a little closer to maybe 13, hopefully at least 12 and a half, even when the vehicle is not running. Joe, why don't you go ahead and start it up for me to see if we can check the charging system itself and if it's actually putting out. We'd like to see it up around 14 or over like it is. Joe, kick those lights on. Let's put a load on, at least a little bit of a load. See if we can see it pull down. Joe, I don't think we have any problem with the charging system itself on this particular vehicle. You can go ahead and kill it. I think that we have a battery that is starting to go bad. And you can check the date on the battery. You know, these batteries are going through a lot of heat and cold cycles. And it puts a lot of wear and tear on them, just like any other battery you're going to have at home. Sometimes you just got to replace them. Joe, you know, it would be really nice when you're starting on a project, say like on our Mustang back here, that when you first started turning wrenches, you had all the right ones with you from start to finish. Absolutely, and if you do it every day, of course you might have it memorized, but if you're like me who gets to turn wrenches once a week, once a month, it can be a little bit more of a challenge. Wouldn't it be great, as you said, and yes, it is now possible. That's right, with Wrench ID, you're gonna have the right size every time. This is a really cool little tool, whether you are a mechanic or some type of a contractor, electrician, plumber, whatever it may be, it's got three different modes. And, and right off the bat, Joe, we're gonna talk about the fact that you can go through, measure the different bolts and nuts and whatever, and be able to see right away with the Wrench ID WR ID. So we're going to show you right now. Can you guess what this is? No. Okay. Three quarters. We don't have to worry about that because Let's we're going to do this. Let's see. We're going to do this and we're going to hold it. Three quarters. Bang. Boom. Look at that. Yes. And the nice thing is the wrench, the wrench ID also shows whether you have your standard or your 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter. Are you sure you got that socket? Of course. Yes. Nobody ever loses the 10 millimeter. But it's not only measuring for your wrenches and your sockets and what have you. There are other modes on the wrench ID. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this. We can do inner and outer diameter. So right now we're going to go to mode. And we have the outer diameter, but I want to do inner diameter. Inner diameter. Yes, and we've already made sure that we are completely zeroed out on this. So we're going to come over here to our pipe. We're going to stick it in. And there we go. It's easy as that. And Joe, if you are in a dark location, I bet you've got a light. Absolutely. Same for the outer diameter. We can check like on our stock here, just over an inch and a half. And you're able to measure 
the outside diameter. So right. it's basically, it's a, in many ways, it's a digital caliper that also has the wrench ID feature for all the common sizes, kind of pre-programmed for that aspect of it. I think that's very convenient. Right, and if you need to be able to remember something, you've also got memory on here and so much, but you know what, we're gonna go back here, give you a good example of where you can do some of the memory stuff, Joe, if you need to like save it, because there is the recall button, the hold button on the wrench ID. I love this aspect the best because I'm thinking about getting ready for a project. I want to survey what I'm going to be doing and then go get the tools and yeah. try to not have to go back and forth to the toolbox ever again. And a perfect example, 9 sixteenths. Boom. Yep. 9 16 as well, even though a lot of times, Joe, you know, we can eyeball some of the stuff and know, but if you want to be exactly sure, especially when it comes to the millimeters and stuff like that, it may be, you know, if you don't work with that type, the metric system. The metric much, system. The metric system as much. But like I mentioned earlier, you know, we have a light under here right now, but say you are in a darker location, the Wrench ID has a nice little LED light that all you have to do is click the button and it comes on. There you go. Think of how many times you've been up under your vehicle and you see a nut or a bolt and you're like, well, what size is that? It could be this one, this one, or this one. Maybe you can't see it too well or it's a little bit obscured. You can just reach this up get an ID, and now you know exactly which socket you need. You know, Joe, this is definitely a cool tool for everybody to have. No, I can see people wanting to have this in their toolbox. Maybe at first being like, do I need that? And then once you use it and you go around and you get measurements and you realize how easy it works and how well it works, the answer is absolutely yes. You need this in your toolbox. You know, and it comes with a it's nice little case. They're nice enough to include not only a battery, when you first get it, but an extra one as well. And Joe, this thing does a lot of measuring all the way from your metric sizes from six millimeter all the way up to 54 millimeter, quarter inch up to two and an eighth. Simple as that, inside diameter, outside diameter. It has hold, recall, and the light. Oh, I don't like the light. You know what, Joe? That's it for us this year. I know our whole season is over, but we have learned a lot. We met a lot of great people. I know the audience is out there. They're loving it, but we've got to say goodbye. That's right. We're going to see you in an NHRA event. Yes, championships will be decided. Hope to see you guys out there as well. That's right. If you have a product that you would like to see featured on one of our shows, just shoot an email to sponsors at masterstv.com. And that's all that we have for this season of Performance TV. Presented, presented by, by Top Code. Code. Yeah.